With several police officer retirements pending in the middle of the first decade of the new century, Chief Dale McPhee and the administrative team of the Prince Albert Police Service recognized a unique opportunity, an opportunity to help to mold the membership of the service to better reflect the demographics of the community we serve and to bring the number of frontline Aboriginal police officers up. Innovative thinking didn't stop with identifying candidates. The Aboriginal Mentoring Program was developed and introduced as a pilot project to help to ensure that the identified candidates were prepared for the rigors of training at the Saskatchewan Police College. Our uh, community here is uh, a very high, has a very high concentration of First Nation and Métis people. And uh, in order for us to uh, make sure that we reflected the community, we had to have an applicant pool that, that was similar to what was found in our community, and that wasn't happening. Uh, before 2005, our applicant pool tended to be Caucasian males. We had difficulty attracting to our profession uh, females or people who had culture. Uh, there was a number of stumbling blocks, I think, in the process. Uh, but simply the applicant pool wasn't there. So even if they were successful through the process, uh, we weren't having enough people apply. And so uh, through the uh, Aboriginal Mentoring Program, we actually increased the number of people who had applied uh, who had uh, First Nation background. Uh, we ended up interviewing 17 qualified uh, people for four positions, and, uh, and, they were, and those four people were successful. Their plan was focused, simple and innovative. Learn from the past and think outside the box when it came to recruiting high caliber Aboriginal police recruits. Rather than continuing to simply join the other major police services that were traveling to First Nations and Métis communities in and out of Saskatchewan hoping to attract candidates from among the competition, we changed focus and utilized existing pools of talent and Aboriginal leaders in and around our community to identify specific candidates. really wanted to do was to make sure that we could recruit First Nation and Métis people and to keep them here, make sure that they were going to be successful once they were here and that did occur. We were able to bring uh, a number of people overnight to increase the uh, uh, percentage of First Nation people in our police service. One of the first hurdles that had to be overcome was the signing of a letter of understanding with the Prince Albert Police Service Police Association. This was a non-traditional way of employing potential police officers without requirements necessarily being met upon initial employment. These positions were additions to authorized strength with an eye to filling pending retirements, recruiting outside of the box. The association was willing to be supportive and the project proceeded to the funding level. Funding was approved from Indian and Northern Affairs Canada and Saskatchewan Justice. Seventeen strong candidates were interviewed and four were initially selected to start the program in March of 2005. Strengths and weaknesses were identified. An existing senior patrol member was assigned to each of the candidates as a mentor and the program began. Local Crown Prosecutors from the Public Prosecutions Division of the Saskatchewan Ministry of Justice participated with criminal code and basic law instruction for the selected candidates. Fitness, nutrition instruction, and report writing are important police college skills that were considered important enough to be reviewed. In June of 2005, the first four candidates were sworn in as special constables with the Prince Albert Police Service. All four were assigned to patrol duties within the service, working alongside experienced officers. In September 2005, two of the candidates were sent to the Saskatchewan Police College as recruits. Constable Tim Ballantyne graduated in class number 51 in December of 2005. Two other candidates attended the college in January of 2006. Constables Darcy Bear and Darcy Burns graduated in class number 52 in April of 2006. Constable Kelsey Bigotty followed in class number 53 in December of 2006. My name is Constable Bigotty. I've been a member of the 
uh, Prince Albert City Police for about a little over five years now. I got in through the Aboriginal uh, mentoring program. I, I've been trained, uh, I went for training for a field training officer, so I've trained uh, new recruits coming out of the police college. I'm also a member of the Prince Albert SWAT team, uh, Special Weapons and uh, Tactics. And I've been a member for about a year and a half. And uh, really enjoy it. I guess the Aboriginal mentorship uh, helped me by, uh, it was a great foot in the door. It helped me uh, the start of an excellent career. It's a uh, great program. Um, definitely uh, would love to see it uh, continue uh, to have more Aboriginals in policing. It helped me get my foot in the door because um, I had trouble passing the full path. And the mentor gave me uh, assistance with the physical activity part of it and helped me to learn what I had to do. It also helped me learn a lot about the shift and camaraderie of the team. Uh, the Aboriginal mentorship, uh, mentorship program helped me by uh, uh, achieving my goals and becoming a police officer. I applied to another police force before and there was over 300 applicants um, and they really only needed like about 30 guys, 30 officers, so I didn't get chosen for that. Uh, this Aboriginal mentorship program uh, gave me the opportunity to, uh, to get into the training and stuff like that. It gave me an easier access to be a police officer. As a First Nations uh, person, uh, the experience has been uh, awesome. Uh, with the community that we live in right now, it's uh, a lot is uh, Aboriginal, and uh, it's been very helpful for me talking with people here. Uh, the experience has been good. I've learned a lot about all aspects of the city, it's not just First Nations. So. It's been a good experience. As a First Nations person, this. Uh, my experience being a police officer has been uh, uh, great. I work with great guys in the police force. Uh, they've all given me uh, uh, advice and uh, training and skills uh, to improve my abil abilities in uh, dealing with the public and uh, being, uh, being a police officer. The basic idea behind the program is to uh, mentor and provide support uh, so that people will feel successful and become successful and that principle can be applied across the board. We've used it of course uh, in this program we used it to Im uh, increase the number of First Nation applicants and First Nation people who, who were uh, successful in their police college but we also used it uh, as I mentioned with our bylaw unit and with civilian st staff. The principle applies across the board. If you have uh, an increased applicant pool and put structure in place so that they can be successful, uh, it's going to work out and uh, the, the content of our police service uh, bylaw and civilian staff will reflect the community. In December of 2010, his family, the communities of Prince Albert and his home community of Deschambeau Lake as well as the Prince Albert Police Service and the Saskatchewan law enforcement community in general, was dealt a terrible blow with the untimely off-duty death of Constable Tim Ballantyne in a motor vehicle accident. We continue to grieve the death of our friend and colleague, but carry on his tradition of hard work and service to our community. He was a great officer. Uh, he was a hunting, hunting buddy of mine. Uh, we got along great. He was a great man. I was uh, partners with him for uh, around six months. I rode, uh, rode in the car with him long 12-hour days, 12-hour nights. Uh, he will be deeply missed, truly missed. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people that have said the same thing, uh, that they, um, they gave their condolences uh, every call. If I go to a call, they would uh, talk about Tim Valentine and stuff, so he's, uh, he's made a great impact on this police service and myself. So glad to have known him. Tim was a role model to the First Nations youth in Prince Albert and area, a brother to all members of our police service, and another clear measure of the success of the Aboriginal Mentoring Program. We miss you, Tim, and we always will, brother. Rest in peace.
guess I just wanted to, uh, to, to discuss the program a little bit. I think that there was a few things that made it quite successful. Uh, primarily, we had a really good working relationship with our police association where we're going to unionize environment and we wanted to make sure that the program was not seen as a way to bring in uh, people who were not qualified. Uh, we didn't lower any standards, we didn't have to lower any standards. What we did was we made, uh, put structure in place to make sure that the people who were here, uh, first of all, had support to make, to make sure that they, they became qualified before they were brought into our, our uh, membership. We also had them work with very um, respected mentors, people that could ensure that they were going to be accepted and feel comfortable when they were here. And that was critical. So once they, uh, once they were in the police service, they were very much uh, included as part of our family and felt comfort and felt secure here. And uh, we, we offered uh, things like training uh, in criminal law, uh, English language, and, uh, and other things that made sure that once we had them, they were going to have the skill set required to pass uh, police college and be successful and, uh, and, and that worked out very well for us. Advice I give to uh, First Nations people that want to join a police force would be uh, uh, obviously is to stay in school uh, and get uh, po any post-secondary training. Uh, just pretty much stay out of trouble and you have a goal in life, uh, go for it. I, I never gave up on becoming a police officer. Uh, don't give up. Just and don't don't let the fact that you got into the mentoring program get you down. Just get your foot in the door and prove yourself otherwise. I'm glad I made that uh, career choice of uh, applying. To me, that's the best job in the world. Other officers have followed in the footsteps of these graduates of the Aboriginal Mentoring Program, from 15% of our officers self-declaring being a visible minority descent in 2005 to almost 40% in 2011. The administration's strategy and the Aboriginal Mentoring Program has worked. <laughs>